continuing our discussion on discrete Fourier transform or DFT. Okay. Now, last time we had written the expressions for the DFTs of a sequence which we can write in a matrix form like this. If there is an n point sequence, we can write w n 1 into 0, w n 2 into sorry 1 into 2, 1 into 1, w n 1 into 2, similarly w n 1 into n minus 1 and so on. Lastly, w n n minus 1 to 0 and w n n minus 1 n minus 1 okay, multiplied by x at 0, x at 1 and so on x at n minus 1. That is if I multiply these and then add them I will get the corresponding components. In short we write this as a Fourier matrix in the discrete domain it is written like this all right x is a vector x k is a vector k equal to that is the values of x at different instants we write in a vector form we can realize x n equal to f n inverse x k, which is if you take the inverse of this matrix, you will find it will be 1 by n f n star. That means, you take conjugate of these complex quantities and then divide by a normalizing factor 1 by n, then you will get back the then you multiply by x k, you get back the sequence x n. All right. Now, we will discuss about circular shift. The other day, we discussed a little about circular shift of a sequence. See x n, if it is a finite sequence, finite length sequence, If it is a finite length sequence, then say between 0 and <coughs> n, okay. then if I shift this sequence by n 0 steps, that is I call it as a shifted sequence. This sequence is not defined in the range 0 to n, 0 to n okay, because it keeps on shifting. So, some of the part, some part of the function uh, of the sequence will be lost. So, it is not well defined here. So, we define a new kind of a sequence say x c that is circularly shifted which is let me take an example that will be better say x n is a sequence 1 minus 1 2 1 minus 2 3 0 0 etcetera. So, this is the finite sequence then x c n if I give a shift by say 1 2 3 4 steps x n minus 4 is my shifted sequence x c n. What will it be like? It will start from minus 2, minus 2, 3, then it will wrap around 
this sequence so 1 minus 1 2 1. This is the circularly shifted sequence, it is a little different from a normal shifted sequence. Okay. Let us see if I have the values if I have the values written on this okay, x 0, x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 and so on and after that it is all 0, we are not considering the zeros. The finite length up to in this case it was up to 3. Okay. So, if I wrap around then the sequence is the same values 1, minus 1, 2, 1, minus 2, 3, but then if you just give a shift of the first data shift by 4 steps, you will find from the back side from the back side the values at the end will be reappearing. Okay. So, this is a circular shift. So, we will find a very interesting situation in case of discrete Fourier transform with the help of circular shift. In a linear convolution, say I have a sequence x n, it is linearly convolved with another sequence h n. All right. So, y linear is convolved with this, that means it is a summation of x k h n minus k is it all right so the first term in this will be x0 into h0 y linear <coughs> first element will be like this zeroth value will be x 0 into h 0, y 1 will be x 0 into h 1 plus x 1 into h 0 and so on. And the last term will be x n minus 1 into h n minus 1 all right how many terms will be there suppose both of them are of the same length n both of them are of the length n then what will be the total length 2 n minus 1 will be the total length okay now let us see what happens in case of a circular shift why circular i have once again same number of points all right say six points here 0 to 5 x0 x1 up to x5 similarly h also i have got six points okay it's like this and if you remember in linear convolution we reverse the direction of h or x either of them and then bring them closer is it not bring them in steps we move them. So, here also you have the sequence written in a reverse mode for one of them all right as if this was your x 0 x 1 x 2 etcetera and this was h n minus 1 h n minus 2 up to h 0. I have just reversed it okay. and then you keep on moving it okay. either this way or you can start from this side it is one and the same thing. So, if I keep on moving it instead of this I am now wrapping around both of them and then keeping one of them fixed just moving the other one all right. So, every time you will find some term will be touching the other one 
some term of the other one there is no zero all right unlike the linear convolution where if you remember we had written h0 h1 h2 and so on x0 x1 etc so this was x0 h0 and so on and then there was a zero here then second term starts from here third term starts from here so there are many zeros so when we are summing up it was only x0 h0 but now there will be other terms what are the other terms so ycn is x m h n minus m modulo n ok let us let us see some example it will be clear I have x n equal to 3 0 minus 1 2 and h n as 1 2 2 say minus 1 ok. I have got these two sequences what will be y circular n what will be this. So, what I do I will take a little bigger space ok. I will write these 1 2 this is h 1 2 2 minus 1 1 2 2 minus 1 1 2 2 minus 1 and so on. I keep on repeating it because I can keep on moving it see the effect all right I keep on moving it and then this one is 3 0 minus 1 2 I may repeat 3 0 minus 1 2 and so on. So, this gives me 3 1 is a 3 6 6 minus 3 3 6 6 minus 3 3 6 6 minus 3 and so on I can keep on repeating it then next are all 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 since it is going on so it can go on this side also ok. So, this side also I can fill up with zeros then minus 1 will be say minus 1 minus 2 minus 2 plus 1 minus 1 plus 2 plus 2 minus 1 and so on ok. So, before minus 1 this will be plus 1 this will be minus 2 is it not then no, these two these I am maintaining sorry earlier this was all 0. So, if you wrap around then this will also be filled up is it not Achha, with 2 it will be I am sorry 2 4 4 minus 2 2 4 4 minus 2 and so on with is that all right yes, then you can fill up the gap 2 4 4 minus 2 minus 2 4 4. So, mm, sorry minus 2 and 4 ok. I need not carry on beyond one step because it will be repeating this 3 is getting repeated here. So, if you add up what you get 5 tell me 5 ok then this oh, 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 oh. last line should be shifted yes it should have been here no correct. So, 2 4 thank you 2 4 then minus 2 
then plus 2, 4, 4 and so on. So, this should have been 2, 4, 4 minus 2. So, this should have been minus 2, then 4. Okay. Is that all right? 5. So, this is thank you very much 11, then 3, then minus 3, 5, 11, 3, minus 3 and so on. You will find the actual sequence if you would not have filled up these zeros, then you will find a periodic sequence that starts appearing is 5 as uh, sorry um, minus 3, 11, uh, 5, 11, 3, minus 3 and that keeps on repeating. So, x c n into uh, y sorry y c n I will write as 5, 11, 3, minus 3. Okay. Now, see how do you write the sequences? Yes, please. Sorry. Uh, third row minus 2, 1, this one? Two two. This is minus two. Is that so? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Minus two. So y c becomes five eleven three minus three. Okay. So if you write in this form with different values of n, it becomes x 0 h 0 plus x 1 h 3 plus x 2 h 2 plus x 3 h 1. Okay. Unlike the previous one, you see the sum of the terms is 0 plus 0 0, 3 plus 1 4 modulo 4 is 0. So, 2 plus 2 4. So, the total sum should be either 0 or n. When it is n, when it is 0, then it can be 0 or 0 plus n. Okay. You can add always n. Y c 1 should be therefore, the total sum should be 1 x 1 h 0 plus x 0 h 1 total sum is 1 and then x 2 h 3 that will make it 5 modulo 4 will give you 1 then x 3 h 2. Is there any other possible combination? I have already taken 2 3 0 1 2 3 you see all the values of x there will be only 4 elements y c 2 will be x 2 h h 0 plus x 0 h 2 plus x 1 h 1 plus x 3 h 3, 3 plus 3 6 modulo 4 will give you 2, just subtract 4 that will give you 2. So, the total sum in the argument inside the bracket that should be 2. Okay. Similarly, you can write y c 3 and so on. You may also write in this form sigma h m
x n minus m n because while moving it I can move either this one or this one any one of them okay it it's one and the same thing so that's why we just write this modulo for one of them the other one you just keep static I'll evaluate at x0 x1 x2 x3 four points all right and the other one I can move or keeping this one I move the other one now there are two sequences of length n all right length n x n and h n what will be their linear convolution two sequences linear convolution we have seen just now it will have <coughs> okay a length of 2 n minus 1 and if I take Fourier transform discrete time Fourier transform see convolution of these two series these two sequences in the frequency domain will be in the product form okay so it will be x okay so suppose we have a sequence 1 minus 2 and 2 one sequence the other one is h n is minus 1 2 1 this is h n this is x n so what is x e to the power j omega it will be 1 minus 2 into e to the power minus j omega plus 2 into e to the power minus j 2 omega h e to the power j omega will be minus 1 plus 2 into e to the power minus j omega plus e to the power minus j 2 omega okay if you take the product it will give you 1 plus 4 e to the power minus j omega any question it should be minus 1 mm. okay minus 5 into e to the power minus j 3 omega uh, 2 omega plus 2 into e to the power minus j 3 omega plus 2 into e to the power minus j 4 omega so 1 2 3 4 5 3 point sequences 3 plus 3 6 minus 1 so that is the total length okay now you will find what will be y n convolution will give you these values only is it not if you take circular convolution of these two sequences what will be y c k now for a four point sequence for a four point sequence if you take dfts four point dfts i'll get four point dft and four point dft okay now yck is very interesting hk into xk same result in the frequency domain they appear in a product form but then four point sequence with four point sequence will give you a four point sequence term by term you are multiplying four elements you are multiplying term by term unlike in the continuous domain in DTFT when you take a general expression all right there are infinite number of possible values of omega that you can substitute is it not so basically you are taking a general expression of three terms with three terms which will give you in a polynomial form of omega which will give you five terms here all right unlike this here you are having just four point sequence a four point sequence on the other side if you take dfts not dtft dfts then you will get again a four point sequence all right so sequence length remains same you can just take product of term by term let us take an example it will be clear 
and from DFT we can always reconstruct DTFT all right. So, let us once again go back to the earlier one x n was 3 0 minus 1 2 the same example that we had taken earlier 1 2 2 minus 1 and we get a circularly convolved sequence all right this x this was the general x n and h n. So, we have made x e n out of this and n point sequence four point sequence. So, what will be Fourier transform matrix f 4 n is equal to 4 what will be the element value of w 4 means 90 degrees 2 pi divided by 4 means 90, 90 degrees. So, minus 90 degrees. So, it will be minus j ok. So, 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 then first one will be minus j is that ok. Then minus j squared means minus 1 then plus j then this one will be j squared. So, minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 ok and then this one will be 1 plus j minus 1 minus j is that ok. So, multiplied by x that means 3 0 minus 1 2. So, that will give me x k vector ok that is x 0 x 1 x 2 x 3. So, by this multiplication we can simplify this and you will get these values I am just writing the final value ok. Similarly, h 0 h 1 h 2 h 3 can be written as f 4 into vector h ok here I should have written n ok and that gives me that is this multiplied by h 1 2 2 minus 1 that gives me 4 minus 1 minus 3 j 2 minus 1 plus 3 j ok. Therefore, if you take the product x k into h k term by term will be 4 into 4 16 minus 1 minus 3 j and 4 plus 2 j that gives me minus 4 then 3 to the 6. So, 2 ok. So, 2 then minus 1 plus 2 j minus 2 j minus 3 j plus 4 12. So, minus 14 j is it ok. Then 0 0 into 2 0 and then 4 minus 2 j and minus 1 plus 3 j. So, that will give you 2 plus 14 j ok. Now, if I take the Fourier inverse of this I should get y c n all right. So, y c n will be Fourier inverse ok of this product x k h k this whole thing term by term product, it is not a matrix product, it is a term by term product. So, that gives me if you take Fourier inverse it will be 1 by 4 what will be the inverse matrix instead of minus j the element value will be plus j ok. So, it will be 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 then j minus 1 minus j 
minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 then minus j minus 1 plus j is that all right for a 4 by 4 matrix that is n is equal to 4 here you just interchange second and fourth row you will get the inverse matrix okay so if i take f4 inverse this is f4 inverse so f4 inverse into that product xk hk so you just multiply here by the values that we got 16 2 minus 14j etc i'll get 1 by 4 20 44 12 and minus 12 and that gives me 5 11 3 and minus 3 which we got earlier we got these values earlier by circular convolution so circular convolution can also be performed by taking DFTs of the two sequences, take their products term by term products and then take the inverse. All right. Now, so this is different from this is different from DFT of the convolved product X n star H n if you take the DTFT is different from the circularly convolved sequences those four point sequences if we take in a circularly convolved manner and if we take the product then it will be just a four point sequence and it is different can you see whether we can get by the help of dft because dft is a very powerful technique when you have a very large number of points all right then if you want to take a convolution product it is better to take the DFT algorithm because F4 and F4 inverse they are almost similar you just replace W by W star in your algorithm. So, if you want to do that can you get from the DFT can you get DTFT okay. let us see these four point sequences we pad them. So, we append with zeros is also known as appending uh, appending or padding append the sequences with zeros how many zeros should we put you can put but then for dft computation you cannot have an infinite number of points so you can have minimum number of points so you try to make it to n minus 1 all right. So, 4 point sequence you put 3 more zeros, so it will be a 7 point sequence both of them will be 7 point sequence. Okay. So, the product will be if you take a linear uh, convolution the product will be 13, but if you take but out of 13 there will be many zeros effective ones will be 7 non zero elements. Now, how will you get that? So, you will find in circular convolution of 7 point sequence you get those 7 points. There are 2 7 point sequences if you take the circular convolution you get 7 point product and these are the 7 non zero values. So, you pad them with number of zeros which will make the length 2 n minus 1. So, let us see this sequence suppose x p n the padded sequence is written as 3 0 minus 1 2 then 0 0 0 and h p n is 1 2 2 1 0 0 0 minus 1. Okay. If you take let us see the convolution itself 
the linear convolution of this y linear convol convolution I call that also of the padded sequence y linear convolution of the padded sequence that is x p m into h p n minus m okay, summation what does it look like. If I okay, if I take minus n n circular convolution of this okay, circular convolution of this is same as y linear n. Okay, original linear n. Let us see why it is so. 1, 2, 2, minus 1, 0, 0, 0. Okay. 3, 0, minus 1, 2, 0, 0, 0. So, what do you get? 3, 6, 6, minus 3, 0, 0, 0, 3, 6, 6 and so on. We are taking circular convolution. So, I repeat again here it will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Then 1, 2, 3 here minus 1, minus 2, minus 2, this will be filled up with zeros minus 1 minus 2 minus 2 1 0 0 0 again minus 1 minus 2 and so on. So, a 7 point sequence will keep on appearing, but the last three terms will be zeros 2. So, it will be starting from here 2 4 4 minus 2 0 0 0 uh, sorry 0 0 0 and then again 2, 4, etcetera. So, before 2 there are 3 zeros, 1, 2, 3 zeros. Now, if you add up what you get? You will get a 7 point sequence 3, 6, 5, minus 3, 6. Uh, check whether you get 2, 2, 5 minus 2 uh, should it be then 0 3 6 5 3 minus 2 uh, minus 3 I made a slip anywhere 3 6 6 just check up now appears to be all right ok. Anyway, so if you keep on doing that you will get the sequence what was the result the linear convolution out of that linear convolution did you not compute in the beginning ok. If you would have done that then you will get from here from here a 7 point sequence which repeats afterwards ok. Mm, I should have taken a few more steps here then, then that would have been better. So, here onward it will be again 3, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay. these will be the values all right. For a linear convolution for a linear convolution we may write the result in a matrix form like this h 0 
0, 0, 0, 0 and so on depending on the number of x values that you have got x 0, x 1, x 2, x 3 and so on. Next one will be h 1, h 0, h 2, h 1, h 0, h 3 and so on, h 2, h 1, h 0 and then 0, 0. You will find these elements are diagonally identical. The diagonal and sub diagonals are identical elements. This type of matrices, if all such diagonals are identical, diagonal elements are identical, say P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, these are the values, they are called Toeplitz matrix. Now, can you write a similar matrix multiplication form for circular convolution? What will it be like? Y c 0 and say y c n minus 1. Suppose it is an n point sequence, then what will be these values? H 0, H 1, X 0, X 1, sorry, X, I am taking N minus 1 because I am uh, going back to the four point sequence, actually it is an n point sequence. So, this will be this will be n minus 1 okay, x 2 and so on x n minus 1. So, this will be h last one will be h 1, then this one will be h 1 h 0 h n minus 1 and so on h 2 ending at h 2. So, this one will be growing up to h n minus 1 okay. and this one will be h 1 h 2 up to h 0 h 1 h 2 h n minus 1 next again h 0 these are known as circulant matrices. that is first row, first row if you just turn it by one step, if you uh, rotate it by one step you get the second row. See H 1 it is a circular one all right, the elements are placed circularly, you shift it by one step. So, H 1 goes to the first position, H 0 comes to the second position and then they all shift by one step. Again one step if you give one shift, uh, uh, shift of one step, then again you get the second row and so on. Now, there is a, a set of properties of DFTs all right, like DTFTs, you go through them, some of them are very interesting. Suppose you are given a sequence F n whose end point sequence say, d f t is f k. If it is a complex sequence, if it is a complex sequence then f star minus n will be f star k. This is a very important relation. Another important relation is f star n is giving you f 
star minus k n. Now, minus k n means basically you can add n or subtract n modulo n means you can always add n or minus n. So, that is as good as f star n minus k is it not? I can put n minus k and modulo n wherever required I will add n or subtract n. So, let let us have a sequence f n is equal to x n plus j times h n. Okay. What was the sequence that we had earlier taken 3 0 1 2 plus j times 1 2 2 minus 1 is that all right. So, this can be written as 3 plus j 0 plus 2 j minus 1 plus 2 j and 2 minus j this is a complex sequence is it all right. Now, if we take the Fourier transform discrete Fourier transform of this sequence multiplied by f k this vector that gives me f k hmm, I have chosen uh, wrong notations because capital F if I take and that should not get uh, confused with Fourier transform matrix A. F. Okay. Uh, all right. In many books, they write capital W as the matrix that is Fourier matrix, the, whose elements are W n, n, okay, or k, whatever it is. Uh, a very bold W they write. Okay. In many textbooks, they write capital F. So either way, I should have chosen say. My let us write y n. Okay. Let us write y n. This is a general formula. Let us write y n. Then what will be y k? It will be Fourier matrix F 4 multiplied by this sequence all right, t plus j 0 plus 2 j minus 1 plus 2 j and 2 minus j. Okay. So, if you take the product you will find this will give you 4 plus 4 j it is actually if you look at it 3 plus j all these if you add up together 3 plus 2 5 minus 1 4 and 2 to 4 4 j. Okay. First element is 1 1 1 1 is it not? So, add them together. Next one is 1 minus j minus 1 plus j. So, if you multiply each element 1 3 plus j then minus j into 2 j. So, that gives me plus 2 and if you add them together that gives me 7 plus j. Similarly, this one will be 2 j, this one will be 1 minus 3 j. Okay. So, what will be x 0? What is x k? x k x k no if you are given a complex sequence okay. if you are given a complex sequence then if I take the Fourier transform y k is x k plus j times h k. Okay. How do you calculate x k and h k from y k 
like that in the normal sequence you take real part and imaginary part in the transform domain so x k will be half of y k plus y star minus k okay so here uh, let us write x k minus k modulo n minus k modulo n capital n here it is 4 so let us see the values that we have computed what will be x0 it will be half of 4 plus 4 j and y star 0 modulo 4 it will be again 0. So, 4 plus 4 j complex term of that will be 4 minus 4 j it will be 4 ok. x 1 will be half of f 1 that is 7 plus j and then this one 1 minus 3 j star of that will be 1 plus 3 j is it all right it will be 4 plus 2 j ok x 2 similarly you see for yourself it will be 2 j x 0 1 2 x 2 and see y 2 is 2 j and what about y minus 2 minus 2 if you take modulo 4 that means it will be again plus 2 and complex conjugate of that will be minus 2 j. So, it will give you 0 all right and x 3 x 3 will be similarly 4 minus 2 j ok. Similarly, h 0 with the same logic h 0 will come out as 4 h 1 will come out as 1 minus 3 j h 2 will be coming as 0 and h 3 will come out as 1 plus 3 j ok. What was our earlier result? Same. That means, you are reducing the efforts of computing DFTs of two sequences in one go. You get my point? There are two sequences x 1 and x 2 say x 1 n and x 2 n of n points. You club them together as a single complex number x 1 plus j x 2 take the DFT all right. Suppose DFT is y k all right and then take its negative values complex conjugates with the modulo n then add them together divide by 2 you get x k subtract one from the other divide by 2 2 j you get the other one all right. So, computationally this will be much more effective when you have large number of points instead of taking two four DF, I mean four point DFTs I have done it in one uh, single uh, operation all right. Only thing we are taking DFTs of complex numbers all right. Thank you very much we will continue with this in the next class.